We're in the last and final section about keep challenging yourself. So this is a section where I bring you through the resources to both tackle more advanced levels of machine learning and use more advanced models and also resources to increase the amount of knowledge and your competitive experience around creating machine learning models. In this section, we're going to take a look at two different aspects of advancing yourself after this machine learning introductory course. We're going to look at number one, advanced libraries for machine learning, and number two, next steps of what you can do in terms of going to Kaggle or hackathons or YouTube channels and more. Advanced libraries for machine learning. So in this video, we're going to take a look at a few classes of advanced machine learning libraries. So number one, we have TensorFlow or Torch, and then we have Keras and Lasagna, which are more high level deep learning libraries. And then we have Spacey, NLTK, and Stanford NLP, which are machine learning libraries geared towards text data, and obviously OpenCV, which is machine learning geared towards image data. So if you are interested in this course, it's very likely that you have heard about the term deep learning. So everything we have used in this course is what's called shallow learning or shallow learners, where we have one layer of a model, right? So for example, if you think about linear models, then there is one model that is being optimized and it would take the output directly and that is our prediction. In deep learning, we have multiple layers. So we have multiple models chained together and they are optimized at the same time where one model's output is connected to the second model's input and the second model's output is connected to the third model's input, etc creating a multi-layered structure that is capable of capturing very complicated relationships between the inputs and the outputs. Obviously, the most common deep learning method is to use neural networks. So you have a one-layered neural network, which is a shallow model, and if you stack them up and you have a multi-layered neural network, then you would have a conventionally called a deep learning network. And so deep learning is a very natural next step for you to explore. That is not to say that if you're doing deep learning, you suddenly become a master of machine learning. That is not a thing. Machine learning itself in models around one layer models or what we call shallow learning models have a lot of complexity to them in, and is very, very powerful. And in a lot of tasks, something like an SVM or even a logistic regression can produce state-of-the-art results over something like a deep neural network. So while there's a lot of hype around deep learning, I encourage you to explore this, understand why deep learning can do what it can do, but also understand that deep learning is not the be-all and end-all of machine learning. The other thing that you must have realized by now as we talked more about why a model is a model in the last few sections is that doing machine learning is very dependent on having very strong computational libraries so you can do very good math very quickly. So TensorFlow and Torch are both libraries that do this. So TensorFlow is one of the open source software library for high performance numerical computation. So you can think of it as very powerful NumPy, right? Or very powerful scikit-learn. So in fact, there's actually a TensorFlow package out there I'm not going to show you where it implements all the scikit-learn models in TensorFlow and is significantly faster. So that's what TensorFlow is. So the easiest way for you to learn how to use TensorFlow is to follow tutorials out there. There are also more courses from us which can teach you TensorFlow. If you're very curious to take a look, then if you go to tensorflow.org, you can install it, and you can also look at the various tutorials that are here. And for example, here you have the tutorials and something like MNIST, which is an image recognition or image classification task. So instead of classifying images using something like an SVM, we use a convolutional neural network built with TensorFlow and that would give you a good introduction to TensorFlow. 
So similar to TensorFlow, we have Torch. So this is Torch. Uh, now that we come from the Python background, there's PyTorch, which is an interface into Torch with Python. Torch is again a scientific computing framework, very, very powerful version of NumPy that has wide support for machine learning algorithms and it gains a speed by using GPUs first in the computations. If you want to understand why GPUs speed up computation in machine learning, I suggest you to look at one of the courses from us on high performance computing or troubleshooting application performance. That's one by me. That would bring you through how we can actually increase the performance of machine learning algorithms and scientific computing in general using GPUs and CPUs. Torch is originally written in Lua and it interfaces with some GPUs libraries that under the hood. So NVIDIA has a GPU library called CUDA and CUDA allows you to run quickly scientific computing functions on their GPUs. So Torch is one of the interfaces with CUDA and then you can use PyTorch to interface with Torch. And that's how you can use Torch to do deep learning or maybe a very fast shallow learning model. If you look into TensorFlow or Torch, you would notice that it's very low level. So these two, TensorFlow and Torch both implement machine learning models in a way that, I guess the best way to say it is, it's only one step removed from reading equations, right? So obviously, when we come from a very basic machine learning background after this course, it's very inefficient for us to start learning deep learning from symbols up, right? From kind of the theories. So the easy way in is to look at high level neural networks frameworks like Keras and Lasagna. So this is Keras. Keras is written in Python and it can run on top of TensorFlow, CNTK or Theano. So all of these are high performance computing libraries. TensorFlow we just saw. I recommend TensorFlow simply because of how many examples there are out there. And as you progress as a machine learning expert, you would inevitably read a lot of papers about trying to understand what other people are doing at the cutting edge. And a lot of these papers are implemented in TensorFlow. Keras is a high level way of using TensorFlow. So imagine if scikit-learn, it makes using TensorFlow as easy as scikit-learn, right? So you also have the fit methods, you also have the scoring methods, and you can declare a neural network with ease. So Lasagna is a different high level library to build and train neural networks. Unlike Keras, it only accepts the underlying computational library being Theano. So I don't, because we are accessing this from a high level API, it doesn't really matter. But if you already have TensorFlow installed in your machine or you're using CUDA library for, because you have an NVIDIA GPU, then I think using Keras is easier, but then you also need to think about how much documentation and tutorials are out there with respect to Keras versus Lasagna. I'm showing you because I want to impress upon you that there's not one framework that is the best for everything. Each framework is under development. There's a lot of eyeballs on everything. And you need to be aware of what tools are the best for you to focus on the ideas behind machine learning and not the implementation of the machine learning models. Because if you have already noticed throughout this course, the concepts are actually quite difficult, but the code is actually quite easy. All I have done is distill the ideas into the code and the code looks very easy, but then the code needs to be easy and you need to understand the tools enough so that you can focus on the ideas and not how to implement your idea in the code. So again, the reason I'm showing you multiple libraries between Keras and Lasagna is because there's a lot of choice out there and I encourage you to familiarize yourself with what's out there and what's the best tool to do anything so that if you have a new machine learning idea, you can implement it directly to test out whether it works, and not focus on how to actually execute on it. Now let's turn to natural language processing libraries. So these libraries deal specifically with machine learning on top of natural language data. One of the newer newcomers of this world is Spacey, offers natural language processing in Python interfacing with very well with deep learning models. So what you can do is actually swap out individual models in Spacey and substitute a different TensorFlow model inside. And Spacey is built on top of TensorFlow. So it actually works really well when you want to use Spacey out of the blocks and perform natural language processing tasks. 
but then when you hit a ceiling and you're like, okay, I want to push the performance a bit more of my natural language processing pipeline, then you can very easily swap out the models inside Spacey and use something else. So it excels in large scale information extraction. It's written carefully for using Cython, the C version of the C interpreter or the C extension of Python. It also interoperates seamlessly with TensorFlow, PyTorch, Scikit-Learn, and GenSim. So it interfaces very well with Python's awesome AI ecosystem. And also it focuses on getting things done and not excessive theory. Of course, when we're talking about natural language processing, we can't forget natural language toolkit and LTK. And that's the granddaddy of using Python to deal with human language data. It has less emphasis on machine learning, but it has more emphasis on using existing corpora and lexical resources such as WordNet to help you process text better, such that your text can then be feed better downstream into your machine learning models. The last thing I want to show you is Stanford Core NLP. So very academic driven NLP project provides a set of human language technology tools. So it's again, less focused on machine learning, more focused on making natural language data interpretable by a machine. And then you can then feed this into second learn or something and perform further machine learning. So when you're focused on natural language data, NLP, NLTK, Core NLP, all focus on making natural language data operable with machine learning algorithms. So if you're planning to go into natural language processing after studying this course, then using these libraries would really help you take what you've learned from this course and apply it to natural language data after these libraries have transformed the natural language data. Last thing to mention is if you're not looking at natural language data, but you're actually looking at image data instead, then OpenCV is the forefront of a data of packages in Python that you use to deal with image data. And again, OpenCV focuses on operating with visual data, so it's images and videos, and not so much the machine learning part. But then because OpenCV focuses on taking image data and analyzing it so that it can create representations that a computer can understand, the same representations can be used to fit, feed into machine learning models and create very effective machine learning models that could work on visual data. So we've just went through a whirlwind tour of what else is out there in terms of the Python AI ecosystem. And we went through TensorFlow and Torch, which are two GPU enhanced computational libraries. You can think of it as very powerful numpies. And because they're very powerful, they are very popular in the deep learning community to create like large deep models that could learn a very complicated function. Obviously coming from an introduction machine learning course, we're not going to recommend you to immediately dive into low level deep learning frameworks. In this case, Keras and Lasagna provides good high level introductions and APIs into TensorFlow and Torch. If you are thinking about using machine learning on natural language data that presents a different set of problems, you can use libraries like Spacey, NOTK, and Stanford NLP to help you deal with natural language data. If on the other hand, you are thinking about visual data, OpenCV is the classical library you use to operate on visual data and feed them into representations that work with your machine learning algorithms.